So iOS 17 is now released and to be honest, this might be one of the biggest updates to iOS in a while. It comes with some much requested features like being able to have multiple timers or finally having interactive widgets, but also some cool features that we didn't know we actually needed, like an AI tool that mimics your actual voice so you don't even have to talk. iOS 17 is packed with goodies, so here are 40 plus features that you need to try yourself. Starting with why we have this device in the first place, the phone app. In the past, you would be the one who would customize the photo you have for when a person calls you. Apple flipped the script and now puts you into control of what everyone sees when you call them. You simply go into the contacts cards, choose my card, and then hit edit, and edit again to be able to customize your contact poster for when you call a friend. But don't worry guys, you can still customize the screen you see on your end when someone calls if you still wanna use that embarrassing photo of your close friends. This is just so you don't have to customize it for everybody else. And now if you decide to not answer that friend, well, you can now send them to voicemail and see in real time the message they are leaving you. This is pretty cool because if it's something important, you can still answer it mid message. And it doesn't stop there. You can now also send a video or audio voicemail after FaceTime. I think this is awesome. Also on FaceTime, you can now give reactions through gestures. For example, you could throw up a thumbs up or even a hard sight and your iPhone will send an augmented reaction to your friend. You can send balloons for a birthday and even confetti as well. Now heading over to the messages, we have a lot of changes here, starting with the new interface for the message apps and tools. You can now click a plus sign to view your camera, photos, stickers, and more. Speaking of stickers, iOS 17 takes the feature we got last year, which is the ability to crop out a subject in a photo so that we can now turn that photo into a sticker. This is super cool. I can see everyone using this feature to add some personalization to a text conversation. When you create a sticker, you can add an effect like outline, comic, puffy, or shiny. On the puffy and shiny ones, it will reflect based on the angle you look at it just like a real sticker would. Also, if you hit more on the toolbar, you will see that we get a new feature called check in. This feature allows you to share your destination with someone so they could track you. For example, let's say you had a long night of partying and you took an Uber home by yourself. You could then send a check in to a friend and they can make sure you get home safely. You can even customize how much info you provide to them. I just think this is such a thoughtful feature to give people that extra security. Another new feature on messages is the ability to catch up on message threads. So if you are in a group chat where you get 100 plus messages in a day, you can now hit the catch up arrow and it will take you up to where you last read. Another small but efficient feature is now you can swipe to reply, where beforehand you had to hold the message and then hit reply. Now you can just simply just swipe and message to that specific message with ease. Also, the iMessage search feature got an upgrade. You can now do a more defined search by using multiple filters. For example, you could pair someone's name with a link filter to see all the links they have sent you. Super, super useful. Another thoughtful addition is translated audio messages. This is great if you are in a place where you can't listen to an audio message. Now it will go ahead and transcribe it for you so you can still read it. Autocorrection also got a huge upgrade. It will now underline the autocorrected word in blue and then by simply tapping on it, show you what you previously typed. And with another click, you could go ahead and change it back if you want. Autocorrect has now gone from being G rated to PG 13. It will no longer autocorrect profanity. And I said PG 13 and not rated are because Apple also now gives the option for adults to prevent any sensitive photos from being automatically shown. You will now get a warning that a sensitive photo has been sent before viewing. This is a feature that was already around for minors, but now it is expanded to adults. Now it's time for one of the coolest features Apple has brought into iOS 17, personal voice. Personal voice allows you to use artificial intelligence to create a replica of your voice. It was created for people who are on the verge of losing their voice, which I think is awesome, but I think it's still cool for everyone else to use too. It will ask you a ton of questions that you have to answer in a quiet setting so it can learn how you speak. I like to eat apples and bananas. Whoa. Now let's talk about AirPlay. Apple has turned the process of sharing your contact information into a visual experience called Name Drop. With two iPhones on iOS 17, you can now share your contact info by just placing two phones close together. You could also do this with photos by selecting the photo you want. And if you're in proximity of another unlocked iPhone, it will be prompted to be able to share that photo like so. You could also use this new proximity method to share a song or video with someone next to you. Apple also announced they are working with a chain of hotels to bring AirPlay to hotel rooms. I don't know if you guys know how big this is, but this will now allow iPhone users to play their own streaming services on hotel TVs. And why this is massive is because we all know hotel TV channels suck 
and we don't want to put it in our own username and password just in case we forget to log out before we leave. On the topic of sharing, you can now share passwords with family or specific contacts. You simply open the settings app on your iPhone, scroll down and tap passwords. Under the family passwords card, tap get started, tap continue, add a group name for the share group, then tap the add people option to select trusted people from your contacts you wanna add. When you're done, tap create. Now you can choose the passwords and pass keys you would like to move to the newly created group then tap move. Now let's groove on over to the Apple Music app where Apple has decided to spice up how the album covers are shown. They now come with this animation compared to the standstill covers that were in the previous versions. I think artists can get really creative with this, so I'm excited to see what is done there. But my favorite feature on the Apple Music app is gonna be the crossfade feature. Crossfade allows songs that are playing to smoothly transition into one another, eliminating any dead air time between songs. And what's cool is you can adjust when the crossfade takes place in the settings. It definitely just gives us more DJ vibes when you activate this. Apple also announced that collaborative playlists are coming to Apple Music, finally, but it's later this year. And if you use AirPods to listen to your music or take phone calls, then you'd be happy to hear AirPods have new features as well. The first one is adapted audio or adaptive noise control. This is the AirPods Pro 2 feature that combines active noise cancellation and transparency into an all-in-one mode that's designed to adjust the volume of what's playing based on what's around you and your interactions throughout the day. It has something called conversation awareness that will know when someone is talking to you and lower the volume and increase transparency, but then again, adapt to loud environments to drown out any sounds. Also, if you take a call on your AirPods, you can now single pinch the AirPods Pro and it will mute or unmute you. Super handy when you don't want to reach for your phone. Now let's see what is new on Safari. Apple has now expanded the tab groups with a profile feature that is designed to let you separate your browsing for different use cases. For example, you could create a work profile and a personal profile, so all of your work-related browsing is kept separate from your personal browsing. To do this, open up the settings app, scroll down to Safari, tap on new profile, select an icon, name, and background color for the profile, choose your settings for favorites and tabs, and you're done. Also, searching in private is more secure in iOS 17. Private browsing windows are now locked and require secondary authentication to unlock and access. So if you hand your unlocked phone over to someone and they attempt to open your Safari private browsing tab, access will be denied without a second face or touch ID scan or a passcode. Again, Apple's always adding thoughtful apps to their systems, and this next one is meant to reduce your eye strain. Under screen time, you can now turn on a screen distance feature. So if you have your phone too close to your face, which I can guarantee 99% of us do, then you will get this too close to screen warning. Now I like this feature and support the benefit behind it, but I get this message all the time and it is annoying. However, I am gonna be sticking to it because it's for my own good and I will eventually train myself to be far away enough to avoid getting these messages. Now the home and lock screen also got some major updates. iOS 16 introduced widgets, but in iOS 17, we took it to the next level and introduced interactive widgets. This means you no longer have to click into the app. You can actually make those changes right there on your home screen. This is great for grocery lists or even quickly switching home devices on and off. And it doesn't stop there. Widgets are making an appearance in a new feature called standby mode. Standby mode turns on when you have your phone in a horizontal position and it's charging. It comes with three settings. First setting allows for dual widget stacking. This is great for a clock, music, or smart device accessibility. The second setting is more personal, allowing for photos to be cycled through. And the third setting is a full screen clock, which is my favorite because it mimics an alarm clock and also shows the weather and date. And at night, these features are dimmed down to avoid any light disruption in your sleep. This is a great companion feature to be able to access information without picking up your phone, whether you are at a desk or just have it on your nightstand. Okay, let's now talk about everyone's favorite digital assistant, Siri. Siri got an upgrade as well, finally catching up to their competition. You can now change the Hey Siri to just Siri. It is much easier to say now and it's just more natural. Siri can also now take back-to-back -back requests without having to reactivate it again. Siri, what time is it? What's the weather like? Now heading over to photos where we store our precious memories and you know what else is also precious to a lot of people? Their pets. Now in iOS 17, you could create a contact for your dog or cat. I'm not kidding. So when you are searching for your photos of them, they will pop up in their own little album. 
On top of that, photo lookup got an enhancement and the emoji now at the bottom of the photo changes based on the subject. Now you can click the image and it will do a search of that subject and tell you the species of dog, where that landmark is, or how to make a similar food dish. And finally, they made it easier to crop photos by just allowing you to pinch the image down and then voila. In the camera app, we now get a couple of new features as well. The first one is the level feature. To turn this on, you have to go into settings and hit the camera setting option, then turn on level. Now, when you go and take a photo, it will tell you if the subject is leveled or not so you can get the perfect shot. And then my favorite new feature has to do with portrait mode. Now, when you take a photo in the portrait mode, you can turn it off after you've taken the photo. So now you can decide which image looks better. And the iPhone 15 expands on this feature, which I will say for when I do that review. So if you guys don't want to miss that, go ahead and subscribe so you guys know when that video comes out. Now, finding our way to the Maps app, we now get offline maps. Now you can select an area on the map and download it to be used when you don't have any cellular data or Wi-Fi around. This is super useful when on hiking adventures, or this would have been very useful when I went to Europe and I didn't have an international plan. I could have then used Wi-Fi in my apartment to download maps and then use them later when I was exploring the cities. This next one is for my multitaskers out there, and I'm not sure why it took so long to add, but you can now finally set multiple timers at one time. So if you have a cake in the oven, your laundry going, and you need to take a quick nap, you could set multiple timers to meet your needs. Another native tool getting a new feature is the Find My app. Now on Find My, you could share an AirTag up to five people. Each person can use precision finding and play a sound and pinpoint the AirTag. This is great, for example, if you slip an AirTag on a dog collar and now everyone in the family can find the dog. Now guys, let me ask you, have you ever wondered what the weather was like yesterday? No? Well, me neither. But Apple does think you need to, so they have decided to let you know what the weather was like the day before. Maybe you forgot to go outside and wanted to know what you missed. I'm sure I'm missing the point here, but at least we now have the option to do so. Now over on the notes app, if you have a PDF that needs signing, then you'll be happy to know that you can now mark up PDFs. It also uses a new feature Apple calls Enhanced Autofill. This feature will automatically recognize parts of the PDF that require you to fill it out and even suggest answers for you to fill it in. This is extremely nice as it makes this process of filling out a document or form that much easier. And on the reminder side of things, they updated the most common list we use, the grocery list. It will now automatically sort and organize your list for you in categories so you can easily check them off when you are in the store and you're at that section of the store. And then this last but big feature that has not been released yet, but hopefully soon, is the journal app. Apple says this will allow iPhone users to reflect on their day and memories, completed with text, photos, music, audio recordings, and more. The app will provide personalized suggestions based on recent on-device activity, making the act of journaling every day a little less tedious and a little more enjoyable. I'll make a separate video on this when it is released. There you have it guys, 40 plus features from iOS 17 that I think you guys need to try yourself. I'm curious about which of these features you like the most, so please comment below on what was your favorite and why. And if you wanna see a breakdown of the other softwares like iPadOS, watchOS, macOS, and tvOS, then go ahead and subscribe so you know when those videos come out. Peace.